Hello and welcome to the eighth in a series of screencasts about reaction dynamics for the module 30,042. So today we're going to start talking about um, a slightly different thing uh, compared to previous. Uh, we're going to talk about very specific type of reactions um, known as unimolecular reactions. So, you know, essentially something goes to products. Um, and in terms of um, in terms of this topic, there's quite a bit of reading that you can do around this. Uh, once again, this QR code here on the bottom left refers to reaction kinetics. So this QR code takes you to the website on which, as I said already, you can get access to this whole book for um, a two week period for free. OK, so, you know, make a note of all of these um, chapter numbers and page numbers that I've been linking to throughout the topic and um, you can go and check that out uh, as I said previously it'd be wise to do that at the end um, these two QR codes here refer to page 284 and 287 this one here um, in elements of physical chemistry and in particular the 287 one directly links to what we're going to be talking about basically 284 285 talks about the steady state approximation okay and finally um you have this book here uh, which as i've already indicated um goes into the material in quite a lot more depth and is rather more based around mathematics than i prefer to be um so it's a bit more tricky as it were possibly aimed for at um, a postgraduate audience as opposed to undergraduate um, but nevertheless, it's quite useful and does cover this content. So again, this links to page 66 um, and some of the material I'll be linking to sort of in one of the later screencasts, probably screencast 10, because it's particularly useful for that. OK, so what are we talking about when we're talking about unimolecular reactions? Well, we're talking about this kind of thing. OK, so CH3, N2, CH3 um, breaks up into um, its two component parts. OK, um, and so, you know, the funny thing is, is that the rate limiting step involves the collision of two molecules. So you've got this. Um, one of our reactant species, but also uh, another molecule M. OK, so M just stands for molecule in this case, and that then leads to the products and it sort of remakes M again. OK. The funny thing about these reactions is that at high pressures, you tend to see first order rate kinetics, while at low pressures, you tend to see second order rate kinetics. And the first thing we're going to do within this topic is look at why that is. OK. So. This here is the underpinning mechanism that explains why the previously noted um, pressure dependence of the rate um, is, is observed. OK, so you have here what is known as a Lindemann mechanism. Now, in this case, I've removed all specifics from this mechanism. So in this case, you have a reacting species, which is A. OK, just just as we have had in the past. Uh, and so, you know, in the previous um, page, we had CH3 um, N2 CH3. Right. And that was our A. Uh, we have M, which is a molecule. Now, this can either be another of the reactants. Um, but it can e equally be a, a carrier gas. So a carrier gas is very much like a solvent, but as a gas. Um, and so that that could be another um, thing for the molecule. And basically these two bang together and they create an exci excited version of the reacting species A star. OK, and of course, you still have this second molecule. <clears throat> so that's the first step is the activation step. So it generates this activated um, species. OK. Now, this activated species can then be deactivated by collision with another molecule um, back to just its starting starting things uh, for the first reaction. Or it can be converted to products. OK, and each, both of those, um, you know, each of these different steps in the mechanism um, has its own rate constant. OK, and so and, and in this case, we've got K2 because it's a two. Um, it involves two species, K minus two, and the minus indicates it's going back the other way. And then you've got K1 here, which is the final sort of conversion um, species. I would note at this point that sometimes in the literature, you'll see this as K1, K minus one and K2. Um, I've done it this way just because it's more in line with what we've done so far. OK, in terms of our naming our rate constants. OK, so, you know, based on this final reaction, we can, of course, write a rate of formation of products based on this. So it's going to be related to the concentration of this um, species here um, and it's going to be related to this rate constant here. So essentially the rate is equal to K1 times by the concentration of this this um, activated species. 
Now, the activated species is probably not going to have a very high concentration. And of course, what we want to do is we want to actually um, learn what that concentration is or form an equation by which we can learn what that concentration is. And the way we can start doing that is look at all of the parts of these steps that involve either the creation or the removal of our um, our activated um, species. OK, so we can write that as sort of a change in time of the concentration of activated species. And that's going to be basically given by um, the rate constant for the formation of the activated species, which is just basically K2 here times by the concentration of A times by the concentration of M. So that's going to make the species. OK, so that's the formation of A minus the two ways in which you can get rid of it. OK, so, you know, rate constant for the um, so the rate of removal for this step here, the deactivation step is going to be rate constant again times by the concentration of A star times by the concentration of M as shown here. And the rate constant for this one is the one we've already um, got here. So that's the conversion rate constant. OK, so both of these steps remove it and they're negative because of that. OK, so that's that's our sort of equation we start as. And obviously what we're going to do now is we can do a couple of things. We can apply the steady state approximation. And from there, we can actually derive a um, an, an, an equation for our A star. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that into this expression. And from that, we'll get an expression for the rate as a function of all of the things we can measure as opposed to something that is going to be very small and very difficult to measure. OK, and for the rest of these slides, I'm going to go through it in a handwritten style because that will be much easier for you to follow. OK, so the first step is to make the steady state approximation. And here we say that the concentration of A star is low and that it is constant throughout the reaction. So you know, we essentially say that the concentration of A star as respect to time is equal to zero, it remains constant. But we can also say, of course, that that is equal to the expression we had on the previous slide, yeah? So that was um, K2 concentration of A, concentration of M minus K minus two concentration of A star concentration of M minus K1 concentration of A star. Yeah. OK. So that's that bit. Um, because that's equal to zero, we can basically say that um, we can basically write the following essentially. So we can say K2 concentration of A concentration of M is equal to, and we put the other two on the other side essentially. So it's K minus two concentration of A star and already this is becoming handy because, of course, what we want to do is get um, all of the all of the terms that have this concentration of our activated species on the same side, which is what we've done here. Plus K1 concentration of the activated species. OK, and then, of course, what we can do is we can rewrite this, pulling um, both this and this out of the bracket. Um, so we say, well, that is equal to A star in brackets k minus 2 um, plus k1 yep and then we can just rearrange this so that we end up with concentration of activated species is equal to k2 concentration of a concentration of m over k minus 2 concentration of m plus k1 yeah okay and of course um, we had an expression before which was essentially that our rate was equal to k1 times by the concentration of our activated species yeah that was from the previous slide we wrote it as dp over dt but that's the same as rate so from this we can basically say that our rate is equal to k1 k2 concentration of A, concentration of M, all over K minus two, concentration of M plus K one. And now basically we've got our expression for our rate as a function of, you know, the different rate constants of the process and um, concentrations of the species. Okay. 
So how do we then explain the behavior at high and low pressure? Well, at high pressure, you've got a concentration of your um, molecules generally i mean this could be that carrier gas um, or it could be indeed the reacting species um, but basically because it's high pressure the concentrations are higher and so, so therefore um, on the bottom of the um, the um, the expression i'm going to write out again here just it's, so it's dp over dt is equal to k1 k2 concentration of a concentration of m over k minus 2 concentration of M plus K1. So essentially at high pressure, this term here, the bottom part is bigger than K1, much bigger than K1. So essentially we can say that the rate is approximately equal to K1, K2, concentration of A, concentration of M over K minus two, concentration of M and of course, what happens now is the M's will cancel and you'll get left or with approximately equal to K1, K2 over K minus two concentration of A. Yeah. OK, so that's that's that first bit. So that's a high pressure. And that's, of course, first order. OK. So at low pressure, of course, we have the opposite case. So, you know, in this case, um, the concentration of M term, this one here, um, is now small and the K1 is big. So instead of doing uh, the approximation we had before, in this case, we ignore the K minus two concentration of M term and we just use K1. And you can just kind of see already, I think, where the second order is gonna come from here. So anyway, DP by DT is equal to K1, K2, concentration of A, concentration of M over, and now it's just over K1 because our K minus two concentration of M is a small term. Okay, and of course, once again, we can do some canceling here. The K1s are gonna cancel, and that's gonna give us K2, concentration of A, concentration of M, which is of course, second order. Okay. So that explains the behavior we had on that first slide and just does it using the steady state approximation and some hopefully fairly simple rearrangements. OK, and so that's a key point, which is the Lindemann mechanism will qualitatively, not quantitatively, we'll explain that next screencast, explain the experimental observations that we had at the beginning. And that's the end of this screencast. You need to be able to go through this process algebraically. OK, uh, if, you, if you can do that, then you'll be able to answer the basic questions on Lindemann theory.